this is Klaus. It says on the internet that he can have part of his genotype decoded for just 99 euros. Obviously, that gets him curious. Genetic information is stored in almost every cell of our body. All Klaus has to do is wipe the inside of his mouth with a cotton wool swab and the cells, with the sought-after information about his ancestors, will adhere to it. Now he simply has to send his cell sample to a laboratory. There, the DNA will be isolated from his cells and his genetic information will be examined. Of course, genetic tests not only answer questions about our origins, they also play a major role in the health sector. A medical genetic test checks to see whether the patient's DNA sequence differs from the sequence one usually finds in most other people. A diagnostic genetic test can be used by doctors to establish the genetic basis of a disease that already exists. A predictive genetic test, however, can determine a medical risk. That is, whether a person has a predisposition to a certain disease. Today, hundreds of genetic tests can already produce a vast amount of data about the state of our health, and there are more of these tests all the time. It's not only biotechnology that is developing so fast, however, information technology is too, and they're both interconnected. The aim will be to enable compatible, network-independent access to electronic formats containing all medical information possible. So if vast amounts of medical data, including the results of genetic tests, are digitally stored and made available in the future, how can patients be protected from unnecessary publication or possible unauthorized use of their data by others? Results from genetic tests would, for example, be of great importance to providers of private life insurance or health insurance. What if a genetic test not only led Klaus back into his past, but also brought risks to light as to the future of his health? What if Klaus discovered from a genetic test that he had a predisposition to bronchial asthma, a disease that can require lifelong treatment and may even have a fatal outcome? Under what conditions could he then take out a health or a life insurance policy? And would he have to divulge what he knew to the insurance company or not? Private insurance can only function if information equilibrium exists between the customer intending to take out insurance and the insurance company bearing the risk. If this equilibrium is disturbed, for instance, if the customer has a special risk profile drawn up by means of genetic tests and fails to tell the insurer about this when he signs the agreement, then his premium will be improperly low. The risk is high, however, and will have to be paid for later. So private insurance companies want to get as much information as possible about a customer before a contract is signed. And from that, they calculate the likely medical expenses. But should insurers actually be granted access to medical data at all, or to the results of a predictive genetic test? In most cases, Predictive genetic tests only show a predisposition for certain types of disease. Whether the disease will actually break out is something that cannot be predicted. So probabilities, rather than secure knowledge, are involved here. If a genetic test revealed a predisposition for asthma, in Klaus's case, for instance, there could be a chance of around 60% that he would actually contract the disease during his lifetime. He could, of course, take preventive measures and avoid sources of harm, by giving up smoking, for instance. But it can never be proven beyond a doubt that Klaus might not one day contract symptoms of bronchial asthma. It's quite clear that making the results of a diagnostic test known is important, but releasing the results of a predictive genetic test can make things very tricky. There's a very grey area between predisposition and disease, and scientists are constantly arguing about it. It's important and relevant for us when it's risk relevant and involves medical treatment or medical monitoring. 
In those cases, it's important, and we include it in the application test. The problem is that private insurance companies treat a great deal of information as important, and anything that deviates from the normal state is often classified as a disease. But who decides what is normal and healthy? And is treating a person differently because of a genetic predisposition fundamentally acceptable at all? Each of us is going to have to take a long, hard look at questions like these. At the end of the day, we need ethical principles and proper regulations for how all our genetic information should be dealt with. The fact that a genetic test provides information not only about the subject, but also about his or her children, makes it all the more important to treat test results with discretion and sensitivity. Even though Klaus gets the results of a harmless genetic test from the internet sent to him by ordinary post, he still has to be aware that from now on, the fact that he has undergone a genetic test may one day be of interest to others.